Dan Schneider is a super creep, and the fact that they let Dan Schneider still have anything to do with fucking kids is insane, bro. The stories about this dude and the shit he would pull with, like, kids' feet and shit at Nickelodeon is some of the most fucking disgusting shit I've ever heard in my goddamn life. And how anybody could have, like, sat back and just have any clue that's going on and let it happen is, like, disgusting. And the crazy thing about it is it's been known for like 20 years or more that this dude's a fucking like a predator is a motherfucker and like even through like all the epstein and me too shit he still was able to sneak by and get like no troubles quiet on the set the dark side of nickelodeon they were fucking the 90s kids or the early 2000s there's an extremely high chance that you watch some of dan schneider's shows it was like impossible to avoid him it'd be like trying to dodge yeah, all that during it's literally storm. every show dan on nickelodeon schneider during this period was the king of yep. children's television 100%. programs he made some of the most influential productions like Drake and Josh, The Amanda Show, I All that shit. His resume is just stacked with tons of shows that I imagine meant a Probably lot to many of you growing up. All this and stuff. make no mistake, you meant a lot to the creator of these shows as well. Well, not so much you, but your feet certainly did. Oh, dear. The creator of these shows is a monstrous foot fetishist, Dan Get in the Van Schneider. He is a... A child foot fetishist okay vile creepy yeah. disgusting human most, being yeah. and this has been known for years however a new docuseries just dropped really diving into this subject matter and putting a spotlight on it in a way that hasn't previously been explored it's called quiet on set now if you don't know it dan that's fucking hilarious it looks like here's a nice picture of him <clears throat> here he looks like he was made in the dragon's dogma 2 character creator and Dan Schneider has become the face of Quiet On Set. However, it actually explores more than that. It's like a whole deep look at all of the horrible things that were going on during these Nickelodeon productions. It's more than just Dan, but he obviously plays a central role here because he made these shows. He was the head honcho of most of this. And he was well aware of some of these terrible and downright criminal things that were going on behind the scenes yeah, on some of these shows. Of the time. And the reason I mentioned the foot fetishism off rip here is because that was one of the first things that people really caught on to in the public eye. After Dan's glory days at Nickelodeon, people started to pick up on how odd it was that a lot of these children's shows had an emphasis on feet. Pretty frequently, it was a common thread throughout a lot of these shows, like feet humor and having these child actors and actresses displaying their feet. And in 2013, one of the shows Dan worked on, Sam and Cat, actually ran a competition where kids were supposed to submit pictures of their feet to them. Like, that's weird. No matter how you spin it, that's a really weird thing to request from your audience of children to take pictures of their feet for you? That's Jesus just downright Christ. creepy and wrong. I can't believe that tweet is still up, by the way, over a decade later and no one thought to delete that. That is impressive. But anyway, people started to pick up on Dan's fixation with Hopefully stompers he does for a while. and it seemed like his fetish was bleeding into his work and he was having the children unknowingly participate in it by having them display their feet. That's what it seemed to a lot of people, Ooh. so... It was obviously very concerning, he so was people a did more ghoul. and more digging. Still is. They found more and more evidence of Dan being an awful piece of shit behind the scenes with a lot of shady things going on there. And it just led to this reputation that people for years have known that Dan blows loads to toes Schneider is not a good person. And now, Quiet on the Set has released and so much information has come out, not just about Dan, but about that entire Nickelodeon workplace around these child stars. Arguably the largest piece of new information that dropped during this docuseries <clears throat> was the sexual abuse of Drake Bell by someone named Brian Peck. So Brian, Brian Peck, Peck that was sounds a super coach familiar. at Nickelodeon whom was sexually Brian abusing Peck. Drake Bell. And he was actually convicted in 2004, he spent 16 months in the Ryan slammer Peck. and then immediately upon release landed a job with me. Disney. If that doesn't show just how rotten to the core this industry is, I don't know what will. There is deep-seated evil in Hollywood. Uh, I wonder why somebody at Disney hired a damn near convicted fucking pedophile. Hmm. Probably because they're a pedophile too. People tend to hire their own like. You know what I mean? Birds of a feather flock together. And it's a similar thing when like a, a somebody in the hiring position is like that. 
Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't fucking die. They're probably like, hey, that motherfucker got some hidden pictures somewhere, bro. I hear he got the hookup on the feet. Hollywood. He Ugh. went to jail for lewd acts with a minor. He is a sex offender. Dude, how fucked up would that be if it was actually Josh's like dad that was like fucking? You know what I mean? Ugh. A convicted sex offender, and he immediately got a Disney Channel job working on the sweet life of Zack and Cody. What the fuck? That's mind-bogglingly evil like like that's not just irresponsible that's malicious it's not like they just made some kind of mistake where they put a sex offender in a role where he works almost exclusively with children like they it's not like they made a whoopsie daisy they just happened to overlook that he's a sex offender they knew they would have to know <coughs> and they yeah. still hired him for that role regardless that's scary that's terrifying they're actively enabling a fucking sex offender to potentially prey on more children. Drake also described that when he went into court, Brian Peck had the support of some very powerful and familiar faces. There were 41 character letters written to the judge asking for leniency for Brian Peck. 41 letters of support from industry personnel that were trying to get a lighter sentence for Brian Peck, even knowing that he is guilty of the crimes for which he is about to face the punishment, asking for a more generous sentence. These weren't just 41 pieces of toilet paper with nonsensical scribblings on it from nobodies. These were 41 character letters that were submitted by industry <clears throat> personnel some of whom were high up on the food chain so these things carried weight and they're advocating for someone who is guilty of sexually abusing a child holy shit it, they just viewed it as not a big deal i guess uh listen judge yeah like it, i know that back when um i forget the dude's actual name the the actor for hide from uh the actor who played hide from that 70s show like where he got convicted for, I don't know if it was multiple rapes or whatever, but like essentially convicted as a rapist and put in, put in jail. I think it was like Mila Kunitz and Ashton Kutcher like wrote letters, like character letters for him and shit. And I know they got in a ton of shit a ton of backlash for that. So hopefully that same I, I understand shit happens. Brian hopefully Peck that same shit happens here. Just as bad, if not worse. Diddled a child. Anybody who's Who on that Nickelodeon shit that hasn't? Are you really going to throw him away and or put him away and throw away the key for that? What about season three of Drake and Josh? What actually matters here? Let's think about that. Like, this is crazy to me. It almost stops being surprising learning that Brian Peck landed a job at Disney right after his 16 months in prison for this crime. Because it seems like that entire industry just does not give a fuck. Like, bro, what the fuck did he do that was, like, convictable, convictable enough or chargeable enough to get put in prison? But for only 16 months. Like, what, you're telling me he's, like, sexually abusing a fucking underage boy to the level that he's able to go to jail? But, oh, first offense, it's only 16 months. Bro, that's, like, COVID lasted longer than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just seems fucked. Fuck about the safety of kids to begin with. So, like yeah, I said, that was Quiet on Set isn't just about Dan Danny Schneider yeah, and Madison all the awful Pat things that like he that, has yeah. done. It's about how all... But yeah, they got in a... Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunitz gotten some shit for that, which I mean, I don't know, like, friend or not, bro. Like, I don't know why in the fuck you would associate yourself in any form or fashion with a dude who's a rapist, convicted rapist, or some fucking weirdo like Dan Schneider. See, that's the thing that blows my mind. Like, yeah, rape is bad, but like, isn't abusing like isn't th isn't this essentially rape like didn't this Dan brian peck guy essentially rape rape the drake and josh guy like even if he didn't like anally penetrate him he's forcing sexual actions either by force or manipulation on a child how is that not seen just as bad like i don't know how many rapes danny masterson had but i want to say it was multiple but like that's the fucking Oh, only 16 months. Like, what? Bro, you can get more time than that for, like, reckless driving. Fucking, I had a friend who spent 90 days in jail for possession of a quarter of an ounce of marijuana. Dang. Awful that entire industry itself is. But once again, Dan Schneider does still play a large role in this docuseries, highlighting the bad workplace and environment that he would cultivate, the weird shit that would go on in, like, the writer's room and the way he'd treat some people. Just... A whole plethora of different bad stuff. 
And in response to all of this, Dan Schneider himself actually stepped out from the shadows, leaving his little gopher's hidey, hidey hole and addressing it head on in one of the most painfully scripted and staged apology video interviews I've ever seen. Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Bow on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program and I... Oh, God, this is going to be some cringe-ass shit right here. ...reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. The interview is not conducted by a professor. It's already, like, creepy. I'm okay. I'm okay. And you can tell he's lost a ton of weight, like, a lap band or some shit like that. But, like, oh, God, just a creepy old fuck. Oh, it's a... It's a series. Professional, it's conducted by a former actor in one of Dan Schneider's shows, and he is not equipped to handle something like this. This is the biggest load of baloney. Like, this is just some straight-up fucking malarkey. There is no pushback okay, from cool. Boogie on anything in this interview at all. It's just strategic softballs designed to give Dan Schneider some kind of sympathetic PR win here, where he comes out of this looking better, where he comes out of this like not the bad guy. It's so deplorable that they'd even try something like this with a straight face. I think it is extremely transparent what this is, and I'm happy to say pretty much everyone saw straight through this. This did not give Dan Schneider the dunk I think he was expecting it to. This did not right, make uh, him look any better in the public's eye. It actually just stuff. made it look even more sinister that he was able to, it seems, pre-prepare this interview to mitigate the potential fallout from the docu-series airing. Let's talk about Maybe the massage. Okay. Watching the content yesterday. Did he just say, let's talk about the massages? Please tell me the man is not massaging children's fucking bare feet. I heard tale of him like putting their feet in his mouth or some shit or like sucking on kids' toes and ugh. It was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. Talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, not cool. No, no, and I, I don't mean to cut you. Yo, bro, from what I saw, not cool. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever, period, the end, no excuses. It starts with what's supposed to be this moment of taking accountability. Dan Schneider's just point blank apologizing and, you know, holding Marshals. himself accountable for the sins of the past type vibe. <laughs> Except he's really not. Like, these are things that you just, like, hand wave away with, like, a simple apology. A lot of what was reported is, like, unforgivable bad shit. Like, there's really no way of apologizing for uh -oh. the things that Dan Schneider has done and also been accused of. So, it's just, it, it's, it feels so fucking insincere. And Dan Schneider <laughs> got away with it, and it seems That's will continue the craziest thing to get about away with it. So thing, he loses bro. nothing by doing something like this, which just makes it frustrating to see him parade around pretending like he cares now all of a sudden. Like, it's extremely easy for him to just be like, oh yeah, that was bad. I feel bad for that. Oh, what a regret. And yep, not good. As like, he pulls just, out his phone I, I want, and scrolls feet pics of fucking nine-year-olds or some shit. I would have liked the interviewer was someone that would legitimately dive into yeah, a lot of these him things. Some shit, and actually press him on a lot of these things. This interview never even addresses the things that people want to hear from Dan on, such as like the sexualization of the children in those shows. Even outside of all the foot stuff, Dan included some very inappropriate things in his programs, such as Ariana Grande milking a potato. And then another scene with her getting like splashed with water and shit. Like all of it was very was she, like, unacceptable. Like, jacking a potato and off seems or to like, sexualize the child actors and actresses in his like, productions. And that was never that even brought even up in this interview. So this interview just, it doesn't have any real substance to it. It is legitimately just a scripted PR play from Dan. I cut it. I want my yeah. shows to be popular. I want everyone to like, the more people who like the show. Anytime there's a situation like this and it's like an in-house interview, I mean... 
duh. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you expect? Am, yeah. When the dude literally starts out by saying, yo, I'm this guy to play this character on his Nickelodeon show that this dude actually wrote, produced, and everything. And I'm going to talk to this dude about how he used to suck on and massage underage kids' feet, kind of against a will. And some other really weird shit he did. And that ain't cool. You know, like, uh, all right. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show uh, that needs to be right. because it's upsetting somebody, let's cut it. So I think it's big for you to say with your work, mm -hmm. if it's viewed as that today, you don't have a problem. Cut it. Cut it. I mean, that's a solution. The, the last thing, thing I want to... And then this dude's like, hey, you, you're doing good. You're a big man. You over here saying, oh, if... If something I wrote 20 years ago makes it look like that girl's jacking off a dick, yeah, we should cut that out of that show meant for children. Like, I never do yeah. is put any content in a show that's going to upset my you know audience what I mean? and make Jesus. them want to turn off the TV. Why would I ever want to do that? That makes sense. This is him addressing a question that Boogie asked about, like, inappropriate jokes in there without getting too deep into the weeds. Just a broad subject of some of these jokes have aged poorly and people look at them as inappropriate for a child audience. How do you respond? the most softball way of asking this question mind you and his response was cut it just get rid of it yeah. i don't want it in the show if it's aged bad and it makes people uncomfortable or you know this and that cut it and then the the interviewer is like Woo! yeah man it's just so big of you to say that like patting right. him on the back yeah like, oh my goodness wow yeah That's like what the fuck? so benevolent yeah what a great solution yeah, that makes sense. what the fuck it's so easy for him to say that now, but it doesn't yeah. take away the fact that you filmed it. If you It doesn't take away the fact that he filmed it. And how many cuts did it take? How many fucking times did they have to up oh, cut? We gotta do we gotta do another take. Cut, we gotta do another take. Six fucking hours of this like nine year olds, you know, oh I gotta hold her bare feet and dip them in jelly. Like, you know what I mean? Like people don't think about that shit. It's too easy to like overlook that shit as well because it's been so long ago. But like all these, I don't know what weird, you know, uh, jokes or milking f fucking potatoes they're referring to. I've not seen this. I've not watched Nickelodeon since back when like Guts and like Double Dare and shit and Rocco's Modern Life. Like I'm, we're talking 90s, early 2000s, easily 20 plus years ago, right? Um, so like for me personally, I don't have any connection to like, I don't know who this guy is. I've never watched an episode of iCarly, but like, man to think about this, you know, Amanda Bonds, for example, having to wake up and go to work one day and sit there for like six hours as like fucking three creeps, just like auger her feet or some weird shit or, oh yeah, take off your shoes and socks and milk this fucking potato area on a grande, you know? That's like horrific, bro. That's gotta fuck with some people big time. Like that shit is so weird and cut. it's so Are wild. Like grande milking a potato type shit. If you cut, some of the foot stuff that you included in there. It doesn't change the fact that you- Ooh, God, yeah, this chick's like sucking on her fucking toes and that's what I'm saying, bro, is like, dude, look at this, this is like- Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. Okay, yeah, that's definitely- Is it possible for a teenage girl to drink water upside down? Bruh, I'm sorry, but if you're a grown ass man, and uh, like when you see this position, you know what I'm saying? Mm, I'm thirsty. Bitch, you ain't even got the bottle near your mouth at all. Who? <laughs> I don't even know who this chick is, but like, literally, she's like, like, bruh, she's literally rolling around on the set with her bare feet, sucking her toes and shit, right? You know, this went on for hours. This wasn't, all right, we got it in the first take, wrap, let's take lunch. So this creep motherfucker sitting back there in the set, right? The whole time, just fucking, just... <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Just fucking foaming at the mouth, bro. Ugh. You know, like, and this was this girl's like whole day. 
All right, honey. Yeah, come to work, and we're gonna need you to uh to lay off the edge of this bed and, and pour water over your head and gurgle it and oh, it's no mm, like fucking rough, dude. Like, oh my god, oh, the fucking... You still had the child actors and actresses doing that shit, and we're sexualizing them. Yeah, it still happened. That's yeah. still bad. Cutting it from the final pro and even cutting it from the final product that you have on like. I don't even know who owns, I think it's, it's Universal that owns Nickelodeon or some shit, but like cutting it from their like their library or their streaming services, et cetera, doesn't remove what we just saw. You know what I mean? They're not, them cutting it isn't going to remove that New York Times post. You know what I'm saying? Like product doesn't erase what you uh, did. It's, 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 it's so frustrating that there's no pushback on any of this in the interview. He just gets to let him say his piece and then get applaud, applause for it. It's, it's so stupid. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. To be honest, what the fuck is this goddamn joke of a fucking beard this man's got going on right now? What in the fuck is on his face? Okay. Far. 41 of those people wrote letters for Peck, character letters, praising him for who he was and asking for leniency. And they knew that he was guilty. They knew he had confessed to some degree. Mm -hmm. And they still did this. But Drake's mom, a lovely woman who I stay in contact with. Bro, just like acting like he had no clue what was going on while he's doing the same shit, right? And then just cleverly sweeping all the blind. Well, can you believe those 41 people? Those 41 people knew that he confessed to this, that, or the other. And they still, oh, I cannot believe that. You know, when I, uh, you know, Drake's mom is a great woman. You know, like, what day, the fuck? She came to me at the time and she said, would you help me? Y'all see that cut? You see that hard ass cut? She came to me and she said, cut time. And she said, cut. <laughs> Would you help me? All right, Dan, we're going to need you to see a little bit less robotic, a little more human, maybe have some emotions in there. All right. Take 237. Drake's mother called and said with my speech for the judge. And I said, of course and I did. Yeah, because I'm sure, uh, at least at this point, it's, I mean, because from my understanding, this shit with Dan uh, Schneider was going on, like, way before iCarly was even a thing. Like like I said, Keenan and Kel, all that, like, way, way before iCarly ever came out. So it was known and was an issue way before any of this shit ever started. So your child has been molested, right? This dude works at this company and worked with this man. There have been rumors, accusations, etc. The shows, skits, writer room incidents, whatever, that have plainly showed a history of questionable shit with some underage kids and what could be deemed you know, a little over sexualization, some very uncomfortable situations. But you know what? I got to go in front of a judge and, and talk about my child being molested, etc. Let me go talk to that guy. Let me get that guy's advice. Let me go talk to the dude who, you know, well, I heard he likes sucking on kids' feet and stuff, and uh, but uh, that's all just rumors. Let me go get advice from him. I just seems like the fishing fucking, for the for, in my opinion, if some shit like that happened with me and my kid or a kid I had, Bro, I would distance myself so fucking far from Nickelodeon and every goddamn little branch and root from it, and I would sue the absolute fucking shit out of those motherfuckers. I would, because like, say at some point in time there's a, some sort of criminal suit or something or some shit's brought up, and like, oh, well, there is proof you did go and see Dan. Well, what did you and Dan discuss? Were you aware of this previously? Were you part, like... It just opens up so many Millions like kid bullshit choice award loopholes. for the best fake crying. It feels super <sighs> forced and super insincere. Him tearing up while talking about. I wonder if he's even going to mention how hard of a cut that was. That's not like dude said, you know, Drake's mom called me and said, she said, you know, it's like Drake's mom, Drake's mom called me cut and 
she said and like what the fuck about this story this is him talking about the drake and brian peck case where he mentions 41 people wrote those letters and it baffled him and then drake's mom actually asked him to help her write her piece which he did and that leads me to a question of if you knew all this why didn't you back up drake bell the way it's described brian peck had all of these people in his corner but drake really only had his mom and his brother why weren't you more involved then like i, I imagine well, that could have been extraordinarily why. helpful but regardless, this interview doesn't do anything to change my perception of Dan Schneider or uh, anyone else's, really, I imagine, because it's just, it's still nothing. This isn't really an interview. It's just a PR piece disguised as an interview. It's just, it's just more despicable garbage here. But yeah, anyway, I wanted to talk about this a little bit. Again, the docuseries is called Quiet on Set. It's out now. And, uh... Yeah, I just kind of wanted to go over it a little bit. That's it.